You might be looking at this map and saying, wow, that is a lot of aggressive expansion you got on going on there. Uh, what are we going to do next? Well, I'm going to teach you guys today. I hope you guys are all having a wonderful day. Hope you guys have been learning a lot on this campaign that you've been playing along with me. Today, we're going to be learning a little bit more about EU4, start playing as the Ottomans. Uh, and uh, yes, I hope you guys are all having a wonderful day, like I said. And uh, if you are, make sure you let me know. Leave a like on the video and uh, don't forget to uh, leave a comment down below. And let me know what you've been kind of going back and forth on and what you've learned about in this campaign and uh, how you feel about all of it, because I definitely like to hear that sort of stuff. And I like talking to you guys in the comments. I read all my comments, so I'm not going to be doing this because we're waiting on tech um, and just trying to save mana. That way we can develop the institution when it spawns. We keep getting busted spying over here. So we are we have cores with these guys and we have cores with these guys. So what we're going to do is we're going to reconquest the ton of clay from Hungary when our truce is up here in five years. In the meantime, we're probably just going to let our aggressive expansion tick down. There's no reason not to. Hey, how about that? Free money. I like money. Be a pass once an alliance. Yeah, that's not going to happen. No, thank you, sir. So, yeah, we're just going to be sitting here and waiting. I have claims on the Hasa. If I wanted to, I could vassalize them, but uh, probably wouldn't be intelligent. So we're not going to do that. And uh, basically, I'm hoping that it will spawn this year. Nope. Colonialism still hasn't spawned yet. So now we wait. We honestly are just sitting here and waiting. That's all. Great power. Really? I did not know we got uh, those bonuses for great power. But yeah, now our economy should look much better because we're not rooting out as much corruption. We're still rooting out a little bit of it, which... Um... So... Oh, we're still overextended quite a bit, and that's fine. All right. So a little bit of downtime while we're waiting for it to develop. So we're going to go up to speed five and just hang tight for a moment. If you wanted to, you could also take your golden era, but uh, we're not going to. Terhala, really? 15% local dev cost. That's pretty good. Missionary strength as well. Very nice. So yeah, we can't convert anything that's Christian because uh, we are a very tolerant bunch and we told the Ulema we would not. This dev, this tech, uh, dev cost is really good, or not dev cost, tech cost is really good. So how much is this tech then? 486, four, so 484 four years ahead of time that's a that's stupid that's that's very stupid so yeah this is good i'm gonna save up this admin nice we keep getting all these really good events army professionalism is solid um i'm actually gonna go ahead and drill my armies because why not uh so we have this 15 stack over here i suppose they can drill as well and then let's get you guys over here drilling as well not the best general but pretty good all around and we may bring out a couple more Janissaries if we feel like it. Is it going to spawn this month? And... Hey, there we go. Colonialism has spawned. So, colonialism has spawned. And what that means is every year, tech costs will go up by 1% until you uh, embrace it. So, what we see here is we take a look at where it spawned here. So, it spawned in London. And uh, what that means is... in This one is one of the few that only spawn... Or only... Um, will spread by land unless you get somebody that you like to share it with you nobody likes us in europe so nobody's going to sell it to us so what we have to do is we have to basically force it into our provinces so right here in thrace is grassland so there's no penalty to development we can turn on this local development edict so you can see here it's 27 mana because we have these guys here 10 percent, as well as prosperity another 10 percent, and even more so like i'd mentioned before we click this button here, which the entire Thrace area, which Adarin is in, will give us another 10% dev cost. And we also get some dev in Constantinople, so that's fine as well. Uh, this one, I hold off on until we get to absolutism, and I will explain that later on. But the main reason is harsh treatment cost. It's very solid. So what we're going to do here is um, dev this up. 22 dev. So generally, the rule of thumb, whenever you're deving, whenever you're deving a lot in a province... You want to consider, and it's also cloth, which is another 10%. So this is just a really good province to dev. Um, whenever you're considering deving, and you're deving a bunch, and you're indiscriminately deving, meaning we're going to spend admin, mill, and diplo, you consider which one you're ahead on the most, which is diplo, and which one you have the least of, which is diplo. So the fact that we're ahead the most means we want to spend the most of it, but we also have the least of it. Uh, and so what that means is we probably want to spend 
all of our Diplo mana first. Because I still like to take admin tech ahead of time for the um, innovativeness. So we want to have at least like 400 left. And since we have mi m the most of mill, I'm going to hold off and do that one last. And you hit on open N or hit this menu there. You can see. There you go. And then mill mana the rest of it. There we go. It's up to 38 dev. Still under 100 mana to dev it per. Even more importantly, colonialism is here and it will now spread very quickly to provinces that border it, especially if it has high dev. So it's really good to dev right next to your capital, especially if you're concentrating a lot of development. So then you can see, we can probably embrace it right now. Well, within the next few months, we'll be able to embrace it. So we're going to do that. And then what you can do is you can sell it to your allies if you have any, which we don't have any, except for Tunis, who maybe won't be able to buy it. So we'll see. But uh, yeah, that's really solid because Naples has entered our coalition. Oh no, anyways. So we just want this guy to go up here. So in three months, I'm getting raided? Where am I getting raided? Oh no, over here, isn't it? Yeah, we need to annex these guys. Do we have a claim on them? We do not. Let's get a claim on these guys so we can annex them. Uh, which is fine because we'll be able to go back to war with Venice, who we're going to have claims on whenever we end up clicking the button to get permanent, cla permanent claims on Dalmatia over here. So... We're just holding off on that. We can still take this tech. Grand Captain. Land maintenance for half off. Well, that's pretty solid. If we're not going to be at war, we might as well click him. Look how cheap he is. And you can upgrade him for cheap as well. Look at that. Level 3 advisor for 3. Level 4 advisor. We're going to go all the way up to a level 5 advisor for 9 ducats a month. It's pretty good, right? Um, I would also like a trade efficiency guy because he's gonna he'll pay for himself and then some so Switching him over is gonna be good. You don't lose as much aggressive expansion, but uh, I'm okay with that Let's have these guys protect trade in Alexandria and go home during war that way. They don't get killed What is our Navy looking like? So we're a little bit over our naval force limit. It's fine. Naval force limit is uh Very much not that big of a deal. So we're gonna take that one because it gives us a permanent claim on this province. It's fine um, it's Generally, you want to, um, you would want to take it yourself, but since it's a vassal, we have to revoke our march status, which will lose us stability, and I'd rather not do that until I have taken this tech, because I'd like to, I like to stay at stab three if I can, because plus three stab is super strong, and, uh, you get a lot of bonuses to it. If I, if you do not know, you get unrest is the big one. But then you also get tax modifier, which is fine. Missionary strength, which is nice. And institution spread, which is okay. Corruption. So there's a bunch of bonuses to it. Uh, Ottomans get Imperial Halic Shipyards till the end of the game, giving the following effects 5% ship cost. That's pretty good. It's very expensive. But 5% uh, ship cost basically means... It, this. It's a little bit of a deceiving thing because it says ship cost, which you would think means ship cost to build. But it also affects upgrade or um, management costs. So if you come over here and you say fleet maintenance is 53 5.32 we click that button see it goes down and that actually scales up for the rest of the game So I am gonna click that because in the long term. It's gonna make us the most money. It'll pay itself off within a few years even so It's worth doing and meanwhile, we're just waiting on this truce and letting our aggressive expansion tick down with a bunch of people So we're gonna attack Austria on June of 55 or June of 05 so we're just gonna hang out until then and uh, Hopefully none of these guys fire off if they do look like they're gonna fire then we'll Turn back on our army maintenance, but we'll be able to take Miltech as well. We almost have our innovativeness stacked up, which is really good. So, in 18 months, the Age of Discovery will end. And, uh, did they change that? I think it used to be 60 months. Is it? I do think they changed that. It used to be 60 months, which was... Or no, it used to be... It used to be 100 and... 20 months if I recall correctly so it was 10 years I don't know maybe I'm just being maybe I'm just getting it twisted but sadly it means we're gonna lose the guns of urban but it's okay it's fine it's not a big deal uh ooh. uh well I could click that for the mission but the mission isn't important because the mission isn't going to give us anything it gives us trade power in Crimea which is fine we're not even steering from Crimea right now and it's not a prerequisite for any other mission so I would just lose the claim, and uh, once we integrate him, then we're good. Speaking of, 
Let's revoke his March status, lose the stab, and then buy another stab because, you know, we're a very stable nation. We can still take tech here. And uh, this is good. Now, if you're more of a min-maxer, you're probably looking for wars that you can get involved in. I don't really see any that matter to me much. Like, I could go for a humiliation war on these guys, but I don't need it. There's, there's no benefit to it. So, just sitting back and kind of working on these internal politics. Like, right here, this dev? Let's dev this up. What are we doing here? Dev that up. Dev that baby up. Dev this baby up, too. It's hills, but it's in our capital province, so... Look at that. That's solid. And then we needed one more base tax there, I think, for the mission. Oh, we already got it. Right. So there we go. We did a bunch of devs. So then you can yoink crown land. So everybody will get upset, but it's not a big deal. And also when you're deving a bunch, you gain crown land. So 60 crown land already. That's really good. All right. So uh, he has died. Um, Mehmed has died. So long live Murad. And... Um, now, as the Ottomans, you get some events that happen on the death of your Sultan or Padishah. Um, so we can either pay them higher wages or refuse, and they will get you'll get some negative malices to your Janissaries. Obviously, I want the Janissaries to be nice and strong. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're just going to let my money tick up for a few months. We get to pick our heir. Let's go with the 354. Osman is fine. So it looks like we're probably going to... Oh, yeah, we're good. So now we're going to click that button to pay the Janissaries. And uh, whenever you're playing as a Sunni or a Muslim and your king dies or your late, your monarch dies, you can uh, go through these guys again. And since we have a monarch that's got six or five, I think it's five admin, you can do the Islamic Center for Scholarly Learning, which gives legalism and tech costs. I think it's five. Yep, five. So 5% 5 tech cost and missionary strength. That's pretty good. Religious unity, which is strength versus heretics. Unrest. And all these give legalism, so like they're all useful. So I would just click them all. Especially if, if, unless you're trying to avoid legalism, which I would always encourage you to go for legalism. So also we have, right, let's click on our edicts over here. Don't need that. Don't need that. Um, Where is that Shia province at here? It is here. So let's put you guys on... State it, put you on missionary strength, and then core it all. We'll also core up this provinces over here. Put you guys on local missionary strength as well. And that will allow us to get those guys converted pretty quickly. I believe that oh, it's Samawat, I think, is a Shia religious center. This one is as well in uh, Kerbella. Okay. So it'll take some time to convert, but might as well get on it then. Yoink some dev, that'll make it a little bit easier to dev as well. So, or easier to convert, rather. Let's see here. Yeah, yeah, 29, 208. So, it'll take some time, but that's fine. So, let's uh, have this guy over here suppress rebels just for a couple of months to prevent them from ticking up. And maybe, possibly, we get them to tick down. I meant to give this province Theodoro to um, to them, but I guess I'll hold on to it. It's fine. Um, I basically always do anything that will give me an option for professionalism. I just take professionalism. It's just the long game. It's it's the better choice for the long game. Um, I'll have these guys head over there. Yeah, we're going to end up having some rebels over here. Let's say uh, increase that autonomy there because I don't care about that province. And then this province here is probably going to have some in issues with unrest. Basically, I'm just trying to get myself set up so we don't have... Um, uh, don't want to be having rebels popping while we're in a war over here. See, that's a lot of provinces we're going to be able to take in this war. So just kind of letting that go. Um, sure, I'll take Prestige for free. Conquer Bosnia. Right, so this cut probably would have been a good war to take. I would have attacked Rhodes and then Venice during that truce time there. So, hindsight, maybe I could have done that instead. Let's get these guys over here. And uh, let's have these guys head over here. 
nice thing you can do. Oh, so here, this is a nice thing about Artemis UI. The age of uh, discovery is gone and the age of reformation is here. This guy right there, that's uh, that's not a vanilla thing. That's an Artemis UI and it's Iron Man compatible. So I uh, Artemis UI is worth it in my in my opinion. So there's gonna, these guys are going to take a little bit of attrition, but I'm okay with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sneak their suppression all the way over there. And it will just put down any rebellions. So this is one of my mods that there's, it has a, issues with some uh, vanilla event pictures. So disregard that. Sure. I want everybody to like me. I mean, I don't want them to dislike me. Probably shouldn't be spending a bunch of money. Probably should keep our money. Um, keep our coffers nice and full. So April, May, June, we will get to attack these guys again. The Bohemia is up here integrating his subjects. So we're going to do another shuffle split here. Again, the reason why you do it is just so you have equal, equal uh, size. They're both going to be roughly a 37 stack. And in fact, as time goes on, I'd like to get a few more units in here. So our truces are over. They cannot join my coalition. It looks like Hungary is like, oh no, but uh, Hungary is a subject, so they can't join it. But anyways, these guys have no allies I care about at all. So we're gonna go for, let's go for one that would be easy to take, like this Hunyad province. And uh, we will get in there and kill off as many of them as possible. Take Miltek, of course, why not? And you can see we need 1700 to, um, to uh, embrace the institution. So we're gonna do that, no doubt. Uh, the best way to do that, and generally you don't want to upgrade your armies while walking into the fog of war. It's uh, unintelligent. I don't care because we are super strong and uh, we have a monopoly on power in this game. So that's why I always say the Ottomans is super, it's just a super good tag to have um, if you're a newbie. But here's what we're going to do. We're just going to get these guys full occupied as quickly as possible. Even without the guns of urban, we're still like ripping through their forts, which is good. Uh, remember, pass your fort off to your vassal. I saw an army walking over here, so we're going to get them there. Let's get these guys on to Vienna. With, eh, let's keep him there. He's a better better combat general. So you just want to siege down as many forts as possible, as quickly as possible. We're actually just skipping phase one of the uh, kill them all phase of the war. And we're just going to straight to the siege them down war part of the war. You can do that because we have uh, plenty of very strong... Uh, siege generals so you can see they want to oops damn it ah uh, this one stack's dead sadly like a little cannon gone but you can see here they're not going to siege us down look how good that defensiveness is from giving him get to my vart march that's why you do it 45 day siege ticks 19 definitely worth it so let's have these guys get attacked over here it's highlands and eh, they're going to reinforce actually this may not be the best fight I've ever taken, but I still think we'll win. Oh, they're dogpiling pretty good, actually. Yeah, we're not going to win that. That's okay. They still took super heavy losses, so. No harm, no foul. So we have the war goal, and uh, we've already killed off like 20,000 of their men. We'll take that tech. No big deal. Being ahead of time so we can get that tax efficiency or production efficiency and uh, buy down our corruption. So they have a lot of men right there. 3% attrition on that fort. So I'm just going to sit here and let them stand there. I don't I don't care a whole lot, honestly. Uh, well, actually, since they're standing there alone, we definitely want to go in there because this is a win. This is definitely a win for us, though. They are reinforcing with quite a lot of men. Yeah, this is what I call the AI dog pile. So this is something this is an AI behavior that's pretty annoying, but it's, uh, you know, to be expected. The AI will just stand like a bunch of 15 stacks around. And then as soon as you go to battle, they'll uh, just instantly jump in on you. So yeah, we're, we're shattering here. They still have man in the front row. So that's a loss for us. Oh, we keep playing all the way back to Constantinople, sadly. Whenever the, um, a def an, the person who is sieging down a province wins the battle, they actually automatically get a siege progress tick. So it's not good to fight on forts unless it's defensive because uh, if you lose on the, on the chance that you lose, then they will get that. But look at this, 39 day siege ticks on, uh, on Vienna. When I was sieging it down with like 18 day siege ticks. So that's really solid. Because each month they're, you know, just wasting a bunch of time over there. Yeah, this is fine. They'll get sick of the war very quickly. Especially considering that his capital is sieged down. So his war exhaustion is going to be explosively high. Very quickly. 
Shift consolidate. Let's get up here, kill them off a of pest, and get them on. Get it back over here. To be expected. This is fine. Kill off as many of their snacks as possible. I'm kind of... Yeah, okay. We'll just siege that down real quick then. No point in taking a bad fight there. Switch those over. Get you guys over here. Okay. These guys are backing them up. And uh, we're going to reinforce. So a one-to-one, -one, we will 100% win that. That's no problem. So now we just want to start cleaning up their stacks here while they're running around because the AI is annoying and they just do this thing where they just run around with a bunch of little stacks. Infantry combat ability. That's nice. What that basically does is that translates to 5% more um, more damage and defense, if I recall correctly. So solid modifiers to be stacking up. And uh, let's get these guys carpet siege down over here. Basically, we just want to start uh, asserting the fact that we are winning this war and you guys have no say in it. Here we go. Come over here, siege down this stuff. We're blockading them as well to also assert our dominance. We're standing here T-posing on them menacingly. Ah, see? Sadly. This is a, a woods fort, so it's good for them. I'm going to reinforce quickly enough that I don't... I think I'm still in a... Oh my gosh, they're dogpiling so hard. Okay, well. Let's uh, flee a couple of provinces over. Still in a defensive... Like, this is mountains, so we're defensive here. They will not attack us here. But yeah, they're just... The AI is just uh, lining up all their men. So, for the peace deal, you just take what you, take what you need and see where you can go with that. So, Hungary is going to give Croatia all of his provinces back. Looks like I have to occupy them because it's not part of the war goal, technically. We uh, are reconquesting, quote-unquote, for these guys who have all these cores over here. We're also going to take that one, and then we're going to take this province and give that to them as well. And we're going to take these two provinces um, because Croatia has cores on it. And then we're going to take whatever the leftover is, we're going to take that in uh, money. So these guys are just going to get full occupied as quickly as possible. We're probably going to end up needing to run up and siege down Prague. They're over here. So let's get these guys grouped up. Okay, very good. We basically don't want them to have all of their armies like dogpiled. So like these guys are coming over here. So we want to catch them over there. So these guys over here are getting beat up on. And then these guys are getting ganked while they're trying to run over there. So that's really good for us. And uh, just need to catch as many little stacks as possible and kill them all off. But yeah, look at these losses. They This is unsustainable for them. I've only lost 61,000. Austria has lost almost as much as I have alone. Plus, uh, his vassals are all getting destroyed. He's got no manpower, no manpower or no army, and then low manpower and small army. So, all is well. Let's come over here and siege down Prague. And uh, for those of you who do not know, we do have a tradition here on uh, the Chewy Shoot channel where every time you siege down Prague, if you are of legal drinking age, you pour yourself up a shot of your uh, favorite alcohol and uh, throw it back with us every time we siege down Prague. And if you are not of legal drinking age, and we always encourage you to drink responsibly, you uh, can take a nice glass of, a uh, nice shot of milk because, you know, you're a little milk drinker. That's a nice uh, Skyrim reference for those of you who do not know. But yeah, they're holding on there. We got our fort over here. Transylvania will take all of the sieges. And we'll, there you go. We've sieged down Prague. Everybody drinks up. Always drink responsibly. And uh, these guys are being annoying and carpet sieging because the AI tends to do this when they know that they're losing the war. They're like desperately clinging to any provinces that they can get. Get these guys over here all handled. So Sealy, Anspach, yeah, aside from... Oh, so they have so much clay over there. It's going to make sieging full occupying them is going to be a pain in the booty, but this is okay. Get these guys all killed. Kill off as many units as possible. Stack wipes are preferred. Here we go. So this province here is grassland, so we don't want to fight them there if we can avoid it. There you go. So this province here is woods. So if we can get them over there, they'll be there on the 21st. We can be there before that. There you go. We'll be there a day before them with their best general that we have. A 4-6. Uh, what's their maneuver here? 4. They're going to take a river crossing if we have at least a 6-5, so... 
We'll do, go with that. That's a guaranteed extra pip. So there you go. They're guaranteed a minus two into an army that's got better army quality than they do. So uh, yeah, that's that's pretty bad. <laughs> that's really bad for them. That's uh, what I would call the clapping. All right. So then, meanwhile, we just want to get these guys as close to full occupied as possible. Sealy is low enthusiasm, so I'm just going to piece them out separately. It'll raise our relative war score just because it's a less tag, one less tag in the war. Sadly, these little stacks over here getting killed off because, you know, they're weak. Those guys are running away. And uh, we got to get these guys full occupied. So any province you're going to give to Transylvania, you get those guys. I can take, I'll probably take it for myself and then I'll give it to them. And then Croatia will also get these two provinces as well. And there you go, 85, and then the rest, which is shift right click over here. If you so somebody had left a comment about this. So if you click this one time, and you can read these, shift or click one time, and it gives plus one war score worth of money. Right click gives five war score worth of money. Shift left click, and it will give as much as they're willing to give, which is kind of a broken mechanic, and it doesn't work really well because this only works as if you're only piecing them out for money. So basically, shift right mouse button will add 25 or at least how much you can take while still being in war or while still being under 100 war score because you can't take over 100 war score. So useful, useful hotkeys, 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 hotkeys. Make your life easier, I promise. All right. So let's see here. Let's come over and siege back this siege this province down here. Looks like we're going to have to come over and siege down the lowlands if we want out of this war in a timely manner. I don't want to do it. I'll do it if I have to. I would rather not. But look at this. We we still are very in a, very much in a good spot with manpower. Could come over and siege down on Spock. I will do that. Meanwhile, we're over here sieging this fort down with 18-day siege ticks because we're overpowered. The Ottomans are overpowered. Change my mind. You cannot. Like, I, I get mad about playing against them. And then I play as them. And I'm just like, this is not, you know, there's no difficulty to this. But that's why I think they're such a good beginner nation. People, like, I don't... And people will argue, like, to the death. Like, no, no, no. X nation. Castile is easier. Portugal is easier. Guys, I promise you. Ottomans is easy. Ottomans is the easiest nation in the game. I will argue that. <laughs> I will definitely, definitely argue that. Uh, so, oopsies. Came over here for some reason. So, these guys are sieging down a fort over there. Oh, no. Anyways. Get you guys grouped up. Get these guys carpet siege down over here. What I'm doing is I'm taking all my cannons and putting them on one singular fort. These guys are over here, sieging that down. And then after we win this, we're going to head over with this army and start cleaning up this stack over here. And meanwhile, his war exhaustion will just keep going up, 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 up to the maximum of 20. And um, once it gets up to that, he'll he'll be willing to peace out, I promise. I'm, I'm very confident about that. Ooh, he's got some good siege ability on me. Right. I was building Spy Network on the night so we could get that claim there. Also, I've gotten some comments kind of backseat gaming about my use of diplomats. I'm not really bothered by diplomats. A lot of people, uh, and, and don't get me wrong, diplomats are very useful. I am not really super vigilant about my diplomats and how I use them. Um, you can, a lot of people, what they do is you go into your macro builder and you go to your diplomacy screen here. And what you can do is you can set one of them to be like always improving with your subjects. Have one of them always be improving with outraged countries or neighboring countries or whatever. So that's quite useful. I um, tend to not do it just because I don't really care. But in case you were wondering, there's your answer. So these guys over here need to get killed. So hopefully we kill them before they reinforce. They'll be there on the 9th. Sadly, that's a minus two for us, but it's still going to be a win because you can see they're shattering while we still have regiments and they're also losing their morale. So if we're lucky, they ask, they're fleeing one province over. So uh, when they have nowhere else to run, they'll run one province over and you can just catch them out just like that. Easy peasy, right? That stack is gone as well. So there you go. Austria has lost 100,000 men and I have lost 92. So Austria alone has lost more than I have. They are fully occupied. They have no chance at all of survival. And uh, that is exactly as it should be. So... We can just speed five the rest of this war while we wait for them to uh, reconsider the terms of the peace. 
These guys are just marching all around past my fort zone of control. Because reasons. Fort zone of control is a suggestion for the AI. Here we go. And uh, we definitely will be taking a 100% peace deal. So, and, and this is another topic that a lot of people tend to, like, critique on. Even though I feel like they don't necessarily know what's going on here. Depend it depends on what the what the war score or the war goal is here. So you can see here, if we're going to have him do it through this mission, it costs zero diplo and it gives him that. However, if I were to do this, because it's a reconquest for him, it still costs zero diplo. It will still cost them zero diplo for these provinces. See, zero diplo for those provinces. The reason why I'm paying diplo is because I'm taking those provinces for him. So if I were to switch these over to Croatia, for example, since it is a reconquest for these guys, but not these guys in the CB, I do have to pay Diplo for them. So you see here, whenever you use the return core, retur it's complicated, but whenever you use the return core, return reconquest CB, as long as you're reconquesting, you don't pay Diplo. It is considered reconquest if you're giving it to them directly. So don't let anybody tell you that's not the truth because it is the truth. And then you can see here, these are all free because... Uh, their cores of his as well. Then we turn, we're going to take these provinces for our gain. Uh, and then also, actually, it's quite cheap. We also have this mission over here to get the permanent claim on the Ulfold area. And we can take a province or two from there and give those to my vassal as well. And I will. Um, any provinces that are particularly useful? This one's farmlands. I'll take that one for him. Actually, I'll take it for myself even. So I'll give him this one. And then I'll, yeah, because, mm, I don't know. Maybe we'll give them this provinces. These are Hungarian, while well, these are Transylvanian provinces. So you also need to consider um, culture when you're giving them, him, them to him. But uh, they would accept this piece right now. And uh, I think we're going to just accept it. And there we go. So I took this province for myself, but uh, I'll just turn right around here. Like Grant Province, give that to him as long as you're not at war. And easy enough, right? So just like that, if you look at the player map mode, we've grown. We've grown quite a bit. And uh, now we're going to set our sights over this way, over to these little thorns in my side who keep raiding me. I have claims on this, these pro these two provinces and this province. He will be calling in these two, these guys and these guys who own those provinces. I can co-belligerent Ragusa, and I probably should. I will not co-belligerent Venice because Venice is in my um, coalition. And so that will pull in, you know, Naples and the Mamluks and them. So sadly, I let my truce elapse with the Mamluks. Generally, you want to be mindful of that, but I didn't. It'll call in the Pope Man. I don't care about the Pope Man. We have no diplomat to send, so we just wait a couple of days here. And uh, I'll call in Tunis. Why not? And uh, just like that, then you just march on over and uh, siege everybody down. And uh, it's pretty much done already. You can see here. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> we just sunk. Oh, it says nine. Okay. Yeah, the UI is broken on there. But you can see here, we're just wiping out all these ships. We've already sunk 15 ships. Uh, and then it's also best to make sure you're repairing your ships there. No reason not to, right? Bring them out. Very good. Legalism is overpowered. I do not have mill access because uh, Austria hates me and probably hates Venice. So they're probably not giving them mill access either. It is what it is. Um, so while these guys are repairing, Poland has entered a coalition against us. Oh, no. I didn't even look at the AE from that war. Probably should be a little more mindful of that, huh? All right. Very good. So these guys are now ready to rumble. So I'm going to... We got mill access through somebody. If you actually want to see, you can see exp explicitly who it gives to. Gives it to uh, Venice. Also the Knights and Ragusa. And Papal States. Papal War Ally. Um... Yep. So basically that just means you get conditional access. Ottomans have conditional military access because because people we're at war with have mill access through it. And it doesn't work 100% of the time, but it works in this case. So let us get a siege general over there and let these ships repair. And then sadly, I'm actually going to have these guys like sneak over here. And then these guys are going to come. Oh, look at Tunis. His land of men. He's not going to be able to do anything because uh, he's not going to have enough um, 
units because it's a level three fort. So he's going to need at least 11 because uh, cultural manpower there. So that's some really good defensiveness they have as well. So that's going to be annoying because he's got really bad siege ability. Look at that. Yeah, Tunis, Tunis has 1.3%. So not going to be particularly useful. But it looks like Tunis has this handled. And then the coalition has declared on us. All right. Well, first coalition war incoming in the next episode. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope that you uh, have learned a bit. And uh, today, tomorrow we're going to learn how to handle this mess of a war. Because you can see here, they outnumber us. Spoiler alert, alert. I'm I'm not worried. It's going to be an easy war. And I'm going to show you how to make it an easy war. Hope you guys enjoyed. And uh, if you did, make sure you show your support. Leave a like on the video. Subscribe, ding the bell. And uh, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you uh, think about what's going on. If you want to check out the Discord, subreddit, Twitter, anything like that, they're all linked in the description below as well as my Patreon. If you have it within your means and you'd like to support, that is all linked below. But that's all I got for you for today. This is Chewy Shoot, and I will catch you guys later. Bye.